Welcome back. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Hello, everybody. Um, uh, welcome to our last workshop of this season. Um, so with this, we will conclude our workshop series for 2022. But for sure, we will organize more in the coming year. So stay tuned and keep following us on our social media. And with this, I think we will start with our general introduction for the people that don't know us. So we are Finom Force and we were, so me and Felipe, we founded Finom Force in 2020 and with the purpose of creating a community where beginners and experts can meet and can share knowledge and start um, collaboration. So we try to empower early career researchers and we offer free training online, in particular on our YouTube channel, you have a library of resources in phenomics. So um, just a reminder of how to follow us and to join us. So first of all, if we you are in YouTube, so you can subscribe to our channel so you get updates on how our training. Um, also, we have a website where we share our resources, material, and speaker contacts. And we are also on Twitter. Um, you can also email us, uh, phenomforce at gmail.com. And this is also the, mail, the email to reach out if you want to join our Slack workplace. And with this, I leave Maya introduce the speaker of today. Thank you, Anarita. Uh, yes, so today we close our root phenotyping series. Um, with, uh, we move, we move uh, from two dimensions to three dimensions. And our guest, uh, Monica Huerta, she was uh, previously based at the University of Purdue in the United States, and now she's based in the University of Salamanca uh, in Spain. And she's going to talk about uh, free uh, available resource. It's a uh, software uh, that I will, we will be sharing the link shortly in the comments, uh, in the comment section. And this uh, software is called For the, uh, For the Root. And it, uh, it's, a, it's a tool to, uh, to use images from uh, X-ray tomography particularly from, and it can be also for images taken uh, at different times. So it's temporal, uh, temporal information as well. And well, with that say, I think we, we, just, uh, we just let Monica get, uh, get with the introduction of this software. And we will be, please post all your questions in the, in the, comment, uh, in the comment section. We will pass them to Monica as we go. Uh, it's all interactive, and we will be uh, posting us uh, all the resources that are available in the in the comment section as well. Thank you, and hope you enjoy it. Hi, Monica. Thank you so much for presenting. And so we will leave you on stage to lead the workshop. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm trying to share my screen. It's done, right? And you can see my screen. Um, yes. Okay, yeah. perfect. So I'm going to present this software. It's called For the Root. And we did this software to analyze, to extract all the traits for from 3D scans. That we did with this X-ray CT root. So here in this link, there is like a like a virtual tour where you can see what is this technology. This is the plan phenotyping from Purdue University in the state, and the plants are moving alone. And in minute three, yes. They are going to this X-ray CT root scanner that is able to scan the root in 3D inside the blood. Okay, so now the tour continue. Now this is the RGB camera, so we are going to finish with that. So, as I say, 
with iRecipe to input in the software is this 3D scan of the root. This one is, for example, soybean. Okay, this is a soybean root scan. And here we use cloud convert to visualize. Why? Because it's a CTL format file. So you can see in MeshLab, let's convert many software. So, eh, here, eh, I start trying to use this software. This is the link. Maybe I should copy in the chat. Right. Yeah. Okay. This is the link of the code of the software. So you download the software as a ship or whatever. And here is this explanation. Okay. And we are going to do a live. The explanation is as well in this with me here. Okay, so before we need to start, is to MATLAB important? Should be newer than 2018 or newer. Otherwise, the run, the code is not going to run. And we need to install these three libraries Computer Vision Turbos, Partial Differential Equation, and Statistic Machine Learning tool, Toolbox. Toolbox. So we download all the code from here and we install MATLAB, right? Uh, sorry, uh, Monica, sorry. could you increase the font? Could you increase the font? And the yes. Thank you. I don't know. Now it's better. Okay. I will try to speak lovely. So this uh, we save all the code in this for the root folder. This is all the code we download from GTAP. So how to run the code? We store already these three libraries and as well what we have to do is in home we go to set path. Here it is. And then you press add with some folder. And then you, you say to the code where are the folder. So this one, okay. And you do the same with, with this folder. Okay. tools and triangulation. So, so now the code knows where is this folder. Okay, you press save and you close. Done. So now we are going to run this root QSM model. So we run, we, you can press it now, you can run from here. And then you have three questions. Question number one, where is the name? The 3D scan. So in our case, we can use soybean root. Okay, this root is here. 
this soybean root. Okay, will be our input data that is already segmented from all the image and then you transform the image in a 3D scan. There are many software to do it. And just you to know this 300 is in millimeter. So you know more or less the dimension of this root. That is like that. A thing like that. So uh, the name of the STL is soybean root. So I put this. Now, this is the parameter we need to optimize. But it's very simple, and there is only this parameter to model and extract all the trace. So here I said, by default, 0 0.01 is okay. So let's try with this. And then we can put another value and we can see the difference. Do you want to visualize? Let's say yes. So now we're drawing the code and you boop. and you can see the seven root we are going to model we can put the axis so you will see with this scale factor now it's like three units okay and more in length but in deep, it's only three units, three and a half. Okay, we presented, and there is the code is running. So it's transforming the, the root in a model, cylinder car model. Now it's finish when you say finish one and we have these three figures they are upside down so you press here in property special and the uh, in book styling you have to unclip clipping and in ruler ruler here is reverse because it's upset the so now it's perfect. So if we maximize, this is the model. The, the scan is this point for the point, and we model using this cylinder size, this part. Colors, first one is blue, first ramification is green, and second order, second ramification is red. Okay, we have three figures. So this one is the overlapping, the mesh, the scan, and the model. Okay. This other is only the model so the uh, the color is what is different this one the right the color is if each ramification one color and on the left is a uh, blue the the main part and first and second order in blue in pop, green and red Okay, and this one, the third one, is the 3D scan. So it's not the model, it's the segmentation of the 3D scan, where you can see the same, the, the main part, the first and the second order. And this, each 
the ramification, the segmentation of the root. Okay. So I will show you. Here it is. In the in the code as well, you can see this. it is here sample unresol is a shape if you unzip it there is some example this is seven root the one we did and there are more uh, two more and the the excel so now we show only the figures but this whole have this have create this sister file where you can open and you can see all the trees, the volume, the volume of the primary root, the lateral root, the height, the length, the you see here many the location, the the club volume. Using alpha shape and convex hood. Here is explained in the red me. Here it is. In the red me, it is already explained what is that, all the thread. Okay. So this is the total trace, then the ramification of the trace. So, uh, first order and second order, the volume, the length, the area, and the number of ramification. Well, we have the diameter is changing with the width. As well, we have a grid like this, a spread, a spread. So it's a, the horizontal spread per direction in 10 deep slot. As well. We can see how the cylinder are distributed in different glass and as well the lateral root. Ah. Here it is. Sometimes the value is zero. Why? Because there are no root in this in this angle. Hey, hey Monica. Hi. Nice to see you. <laughs> Thank you for yes. coming in the uh, present the workshop. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, could you uh, just increase a little bit the zoom, give it, put some zoom. And those classes are more related with the shape, the root shape, right? So, uh, I cannot hear you pretty well. The classes is related with the root shape, are related with the root shape? Yes, it's only geometrical. Oh, I see. It's only geometric, yes. We extract all the geometry. We transform the... the 3D scan into a cylinder model to be able to extract. All the the trade. I see. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. So this is a poster that explains what we are trying to do. With the 3D scan, we extract the cylinder model with this software to be able to extract all the traits. 
So now we are going, uh, by the way, I should say that there is two paper that explain better the methodology of this methodology. So this is one from plan method and the other is in frontier. That is explaining already the software with the GTPLIN. So now another good thing we are going to try to as well to analyze the the growing the temporal growing of the root. So here we what do we have? We open this input, this 3D scan can open in Glothenburg and can visualize the three scan. So this is one in one week, it's a root of a tree. There is in red. Two weeks is getting bigger, longer, and it's in blue. And in three weeks, it's much longer, maybe, it's in yellow. What we do here is we have to register. I mean, because you can have one scan of one week and another two week vertical or in different position. We have to overlap to put together and we did so. Uh, we did so using the skeleton and then using PCA to have this orientation, the angles, or here we explain as well another, another methodology using ICP, the close point, point using different overlap because the root is growing, so cannot be the same as before. So now we are going to analyze how this root is growing a long time. Okay. So we are going to run the software, the same. In that case, the name is one week millimeters line okay yes so down the code we have the same the name we choose one week by default, we choose in this case 0 0.1. Now we'll see why what happened when you... Monica, just one second. Mm -hmm. I think like other people in the audience, we are quite curious. Uh, this is fantastic to see the root growing as uh, said, all these temporal images. Can you explain us to the people that we don't know exactly how to, uh, how to actually acquire the images? Uh, how do you do it at different times? This is this is fascinating. Thank you. If you could explain it us a bit, it would be really yes. So uh, one thing uh, when the plant is coming in this in this facility, I'm moving around. I'm going to to be a scan. We have different image in many orientation, many point of views. 
So then what do we have to do is just to segment to recognize what is the proper root and what is the, the soil. And when you have that, you can uh, reconstruct in 3D. That is what this software use as an input. What I mean, uh, tell me. Cool. Yeah, so uh, you are using the X-ray images. Yes. Oh, okay. So that's why you can see over, you know, the the 3D shape over the, you know, the the pot, the vase. Okay, nice. Sorry, maybe I was, I didn't explain properly. Yes. No, you, yeah, yeah. We are, we are, we are thinking that's very cool and uh, very exciting to see how you can do it. <laughs> so the way this software, this software want to extract the trace to quantify the, the with values, the this 3D scan. So this thing is already an input from the model. We need this 3D scan. And then we run the software and we can extract all these traits, all the values. So you can do the same. What I want to say is like, you can use different scale factor for the same route, okay? So, and now we are going for the same route in three different times. And when you have three different times, you can quantify, let's say, the growing and this thing. So the program is running. When you press in the and it's going to take a little of time. In that case is like a tree, the root of a tree, and it's bigger. So this is the run. Okay, so I already run and what we have now is open. What we have here is the root in different times, time one, two and three. We open one and you can quantify the growing. This is in week one. And this is week two. And you can see the volume, how the volume change. For example, here is 600. And here is 900. Because it's like one week more. So you can compute all the difference. For example, what we did here with it is here. We analyze this, this same root three times in red, blue and yellow, right? So here in the paper, 
we use the spread this spread to see how the root is growing in different direction and we represent here the spread the, the growing the different variation between time one and two and here two and three using these values of the table so with this figure you can see the changes in two times okay one important thing that I need to explain better, yes, is this scale factor. So we can go that is simple to the soybean root. Okay? This one. When you run the code, and the name is soybean root. You put another number, 0 point or 1. You want to visualize. Yes. The virtual buttons can appear. Here, here, here. So you see, it's very big. Has three hundred. We make the factor factor scale very big. So the final root is let's say very big. And the cylinder that are going to reconstruct this root are the same are let's say relatively relatively more bigger so here you can see what i say oh i don't know what it's like but it, very slow. Let's open again. Two minutes. If you use, for example, 0 0.1 as a factor of scale is here. Okay? If we use 0 0.003, that is the smaller the root, and this one is like four and a half, not five meters. And this one is only three meters. What you see is the the part the cylinder here are bigger than here. This is the the sense factor of what a skill factor. So here, for example, you can see more ramification. And here, the round one. So it's pretty similar. Now, 
Prismana. Was happen? We put a scale factor. Very big or very small. We run the code again. The window. Go to the main path. And we put the same. Seven root. But if we put one zero point a press value, let's say zero zero five. Going to be flat. Normally it's not going to run. There's like a uh, matching all the dimension. What I mean if the program is running more or less is because the approximation of the scale factor is working. But we can check if it's okay or not in the graph. So we see if we put a value very, very small, it's not working. So when if we put a value very big, if we put a value very big, we like one. It's going very, very slow because there are like many cylinders to fit in big cost. The root is very big. That's why it's going very, very slow. Maybe it's going to come an error or it's not going to run. Let's wait one minute. But here. Now it's going very, very slow. Here. Not running. I want to say that normally on the scale factor race, what I mean when, when it's running the code, the scale factor is more or less right. That is the only parameter you have to set up. In this paper, for example, we use different scale factor. And we can see the different, for example, here, they are almost working very nice. But when it's zero, zero, 001, in this case, the cylinders are very big and it's not working very good. Well. Okay, so far. I will go to the main screen and then I don't know if you can, if you want to ask any question or something, feel free. Hello, Monica, thank you. So I assume this is the overall presentation. Probably we will have to go back to some, uh, to some details soon. Uh, so we can go back to your presentation at some uh, at some bits. Uh, so far, uh, a few questions is really in general, and then we can go more in detail. So you are using MATLAB to so you have developed this code, and it's um, in MATLAB. So normally you just take it from the GitHub, but it's available. We have posted the, the link here. Is there a possibility? As we all know, MATLAB is uh, it's uh, by subscription. So obviously it has a cost associated. It's a fantastic uh, software, of course, but many users prefer to rely on R because, as you know, it's free or the resources like that. Is there a possibility now or in the future to adapt this code to to free uh, platforms like R? Yes, will be perfect. But now it's crazy because the code, there are many libraries and many things working together so to be honest now i don't have the capability to do it it's too much it's... for me <laughs> but yeah, it will be awesome yeah 
So this is, I suppose, this is a, a in collaboration with a team of people. So it's, um, it will take some time to perhaps move to the next step. It's something the community will probably appreciate. So we look forward to, to the future when it can also be uh, available in other uh, platforms. So this is all based on image collection with X-ray, which is a bit of a more uh, advanced uh, way of collecting images. So would you tell us if it's, uh, and I know of, uh, I know myself of a few places uh, that are already doing this tomography. Um, so do you think that is an easy way of having access to this? I know it's, uh, if you contact, there is a, some price to do it, uh, to have it done with your soils, but is there some facilities you could, for instance, uh, indicate to our audience that, uh, where they can access to get this work done, to obtain these images in the X-ray? Okay. We develop this code because I was working before at Purdue and they had the machine in this facility. So they want to use it because it's let's say fast or the the three D route scan, but at the end you need numbers or a way to quantify. That's why we develop this methodology mm -hmm. and yes it's very expensive but when you are working there you have to for your free <laughs> because your boss need that obviously the information the, the information that you obtain is really interesting how many images can you process uh, at one time uh, one you say image or the already the 3D scan? Yes, yes. the scan. I would like to do you so the the three? Okay. Yeah. Uh, they mentioned your computer. Mm -hmm. So far, mine, the Nissan i9, you see, I process one by one, but you can do more and more in parallel. Okay, so you but can. Do so the, the pipeline can be parallelized and it can yes. process multiple like 3D scan like um, yes. at the same time. The, For example, okay. in the code, there is a, a way to, uh, where is mm, Okay. Uh, make the models parallel. Okay, yeah, that will be very great because it's uh, it would be like high throughput uh, uh, pipeline and like very, mm. But so far the problem is a little tricky mm -hmm. because you can't run very fast when you have already the 3D scan. But the problem is to get this 3D scan it's not very automized. Yeah. So you need time to make this 3D scan so it's a little tricky. Mm -hmm. This part can be run very fast and you can hide throughput. Mm -hmm. But the other part, two segments to create the 3D scan. Yeah, I guess yeah, that's the like the um, part in the lab, in the entire pipeline that can be more challenging, of course. Yeah. Um, I didn't ask which which, which species were you working. Uh, so these roots are from which which crop? Look, this one is soybean. No, oh, it's soybean. One I use more. Mm -hmm. But as well, there are tomatoes, corn, oh. and this one is a tree. I think it's oak tree. Mm -hmm. It's more complicated. As well, you see, oh, I didn't say that. Oh, this is oak tree. So, wow. Yes. Okay, yeah. So, that's, that's I want to, want to show you, for example, this is the, this is the oak tree. And this is the, let's say, the mesh, the 3D scan mm -hmm. that is noisy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I so see. We, we are able to model only some part. So we remove the thing we think is noise. Mm -hmm. So the code model only the big part that they think there is no noise. Mm -hmm. 
fresh good because you don't have to be very accurate to segment the root mm -hmm. and the soil. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. So uh, it's very interesting. W what age do the like the eat the oak tree? They were seedlings, right? Um, See then, like they were like a uh, plant in the pot. The oak tree were oak tree plants in the pot for the scanner. W what was the age of the trees? Like, uh, the... I don't know. Yeah. Well, I know the difference is one week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can see in one week how grow the root. Oh wow! So yeah, first I'm week is mm -hmm. red, and second week is blue. So from here it's red. How it's growing mm -hmm. in one week? Yeah, it's very interesting. The part of like having the time dimension of the. Of root growth because it can have a lot of more um, knowledge about the traits that you are analyzing. Mm -hmm. And also a question I was having when you were showing the video for the image collection, uh, in which media are the plants growing? Is it soil? Is it some mixture? Is... Okay, it's soil. I'm it's not soil. very good on that because I'm more engineer. But it's normal, so it you mean that is <laughs> research wrong or something strange? Because I find it, I find it fantastic that you can actually get the images from the plants growing in normal natural soil, so you can see. Yes. Yes. This machine is coming from Germany, and for the edition, we use the software. From year, I don't know if you know him. From from over. But no, it's uh, it's great to, to really have the, the to really see the architectural development and uh, in real soil. Uh, I mean, obviously it's in pots, but uh, it's I, I find it quite interesting. And what are the so you are you were saying we can apply this to any crop so far? I cannot imagine. I mean, if we can do trees, we can probably do. Uh, so so far, we use, sorry, this is three. Charge you to have Cornetia. This is Sorcum, I think. Mm -hmm. And as well, we use uh, this tomato. This is corn. And the one I showed you before is soybean. So you want your seat for whatever crop. So what are the main applications that you see that this could have? Uh, what is the main advantage? Because obviously it's quite an investment on economic investment for many groups that are interested in, in root phenotyping. What are, what are you, the main advantages you would highlight to use this approach and obviously the software? Yes, I think the, the good thing is to extract all the traits in a simple Excel file. So you have all the values, all the number, because sometimes it's very hard to know the numbers from the image, from figures and mod models. But here you can you can uh, convert all the traits. You can see if you use one fertilizer or, red or something, how it's grown better or not. Okay, so you actually have a quantitative output for different yes, quant scenarios, yeah. environmental scenarios or land management or any, any possible uh, crop uh, 
treating that we want to examine. That's very interesting. It also can have, a, as a soil scientist, I always have to ask this question. It's also the impact of the architecture in the soil. So obviously we can link this a bit, this different architecture of the root, of this growing and the angles. It's a lot of parameters. I am a bit slow, so I didn't get to... I didn't get to see all the uh, all the parameters you were showing in, in the tape, but there was a lot of it. So you can reconstruct a bit the difference in architecture. Do you think this can be linked a bit in the future with um, with the impact in the actual soil structure as well? Yes, you can correlate, but the problem um, to use the CT scan, you cannot use in the field. You have to do it in a lab. Is it possible to collect cores in the soil uh, if you are in the field, if you have plots in the field? Could you collect cores and transport them to this facility and, uh, and do the scanning and the columns? Uh, to my understanding, yes, you can. But I don't know how difficult it will be to try to 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 move the plant. Hmm. Yeah, I think the transport might be a bit the <laughs> might be a bit tricky. But initially, it should be possible because obviously that adds another level of value if you can do it in uh, for plants that are growing in the field. So far, what you have to do is to grow all the plants inside. So it's let's say very very Direct. You already have all the plants and they are going around this facility. So you have all the all the traits. Okay, that was just one last question from from uh, from our ministries. Um, it was the possibility of linking. Sometimes people like to combine several softwares to analyze the uh, mm -hmm. data, so they can go in different stages. Uh, do you see kind of a link with other softwares that uh, you could suggest? Uh, you know, uh, I'm using many software, but little by little. Mm -hmm. For this step, I prefer to use this software for this other step, another software. But one software I really like is the one I want to I want to highlight. I think this one. Could you increase the phone so we can see? Yeah, so so mean yeah correct yeah, thank you oh this three root segmentation yes. mm -hmm. excellent well maybe See? we can invite the um developers for a workshop in the future yes yeah, to, to, uh, mm -hmm. to build yeah yeah that would be a good idea Something for start planning for next year. <laughs> I'll put the reference on the chat. Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I can copy it in the comment. So everybody has it. Yeah, thank you so much. Ah, the three draw the segmentation for next week. Yeah, it's a full new world. Thank you so much for bringing us this uh, this different approach. We have been working in the previous um, in the previous workshops in uh, with two D images, so it's really nice that we can also present the possibilities of the three D, mm -hmm. which at the moment at the moment they look kind of for a limited uh, users because obviously it's expensive. That's always the limit we have. But the knowledge that you can uh, get from this is uh, it's really good. So that we have no more questions. So I think we just really want to thank you for this. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for, for doing it. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. Um, yeah. And with yes. this, yes. why don't we say um, 
So this is the last workshop. So thank you so much. And so I think there is also Felipe if he wants to come on the stage. And we, uh, so we want to uh, wish you happy holidays. And thank you so much for being with us also this year and keep in touch for next workshop. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you, the new members in Phenom Force. You guys did a great job. And I know, we know Ryan, Ahita, that's not easy. And also, if you are there, you didn't know uh, all this is a voluntary work. Or uh, also, the speakers are here because they want to help and share what they know with the community. So help us sharing the videos, help us giving ideas, and let me know how can we help yeah. you guys too. Yeah, actually, the speakers of today, she contacted us that she wanted to present. So and that's um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So we are open to any suggestion for the future. Yeah. Here we go. Thank you so much and happy holidays again to all of you. Thank See you guys everybody. next year. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. See ya. <laughs>